So now we're going to go ahead and show you how to perform a stroke assessment utilizing the RACE scale. Hello, my name is Dr. Prajesh Mehta. I'm a neurointerventional surgeon at Memorial Healthcare. Uh, today we're going to uh, perform the RACE scale, which is a uh, term for rapid arterial occlusion evaluation. And for EMS personnel, it's very useful as a pre-hospital predictor for a large vessel occlusion in a stroke patient. So we will demonstrate each of the individual components of the race scale, specifically a facial palsy, arm strength, leg strength, gaze or head deviation, speech problems, and agnosia uh, or neglect. The first component of the race scale is uh, facial symmetry or asymmetry, and there we're evaluating for uh, the strength on each side of the face and looking for any weakness. So we ask the patient if they can smile simply, and if they're able to do that and it looks symmetric, then that's no deficit, meaning zero points. So this is evaluation of facial asymmetry. I've asked the patient to show me a smile, and you can also ask patients to uh, show us their teeth, and as long as they're able to attempt to activate both sides of the face, uh, you can appreciate any asymmetry. So here there's a moderate asymmetry between the left and the right side. You can appreciate the slight crease in the face called a nasolabial fold, and therefore this would be a moderate uh, weakness in the face or one point. So in this situation, I've asked the patient to smile, and you can now appreciate that there's severe weakness on the left side of the face with absence of the nasolabial fold or the facial crease and droopiness of the face that is more prominent than the moderate weakness. And therefore, we would grade this as two points with severe weakness of the face on the left side. This component of the race scale is arm function, meaning arm strength. And in those situations, we ask the patient to lift up both arms anti-gravity as if they're holding a tray with the palms up. And as long as we don't appreciate any asymmetry uh, in the strength of the arms, meaning that there's no drift of one arm versus the other, uh, we grade this a completely normal exam with zero points for arm strength. So the next component of the race scale for arm function is to assess a patient who has weakness in the arm that is of moderate severity. And in that situation, I ask the patient to lift up both arms, anti-gravity, and then we note that the left arm is slightly weaker than the right arm, and as I start to count back a full from a full 10 seconds, he's not able to sustain the left arm anti-gravity that entire time. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, keep it up, keep it up, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. And you see the left arm drops below the full 10 second count is up, and therefore the patient would get one point for moderate weakness, meaning he's able to lift the arm up, but cannot sustain the anti-gravity for the entire 10 seconds. The next phase of the arm strength evaluation is to assess for patients who have severe weakness. In those situations, we again ask the patient to attempt to lift up both arms, but he's unable to lift one arm off the bat at all, and therefore it receives two points for severe weakness, as in this situation. So go ahead and lift up both arms for me. Can you lift up your left arm at all? Up, 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 up. Okay, so you can see here that he's making attempts to lift the left arm up off the bed and is unable to do so. Any side-to-side -side movement in the plane of the bed, meaning not anti-gravity, but side-to-side -side motion with attempts, is still severe weakness. The patient has to get the arm fully off the bed, anti-gravity, for us to say this is only moderate weakness. If they cannot lift the arm up at all, then it qualifies as severe weakness. So therefore, two points. 
phase of the ray scale evaluation is to assess for leg strength. So in this situation, we ask the patient to lift up each leg individually and determine if there's any weakness. And if they're able to lift up each leg and keep it anti-gravity for a full five seconds, then it's zero points, meaning no weakness. If either leg exhibits weakness that to a point where they cannot keep the leg up for a full five second count, then that's moderate weakness, one point. If they cannot lift the leg off the bed at all, then that's two points, meaning severe weakness. So this is uh, a demonstration of a normal evaluation for leg strength. I'm going to ask him to lift his right leg and count down five, four, three, two, one, zero. And so he has normal strength on the right side, so that's zero points. And just to make sure that there's no weakness on the left side, ask him to lift the left leg up and count down five, four, three, two, one, zero. Perfect. So that's zero points for leg strength, meaning there's no weakness. To lift up in this situation one leg at a time, and if they cannot lift up the leg anti-gravity in this uh, phase for a full five seconds, then it is considered moderate to severe weakness. Moderate weakness, if they lift it up but then it drops to the bed before the full five second count is up. And so go ahead and lift up the right leg for me, sir. And I will count down from five, four, three, two, one. So go ahead and lift the left leg up for me. And five, four, three, and before the count is up, the leg is dropped. Two, one, zero. So with assessment of the leg function, uh, there can also be severe leg weakness, and that's graded as two points. In that circumstance, the patient has a weakness that's bad enough that they're unable to lift the leg off the bed at all, and they may have some side-to-side -side movement. Uh, however, that does not count as part of the strength assessment. They have to be able to get the leg off the bed in order to count it as any type of strength. And therefore, a two point would be unable to lift the leg off the bed at all. And so in this situation, the patient has severe weakness. I ask them to lift the leg up. Can you lift the leg up? Up, 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 up. And they're unable to get the foot off the bed. And you can readily assess the heel also as a sure sign that you know they're indeed not able to lift the leg off the bed. And the side to side movement that does not count as part of strength, so this patient would get two points for severe leg weakness. So the next component of the ray scale is to assess for head or gaze deviation with the eyes. And what that means is we're looking for any sign of the patient's head just looking towards one side or the eyes forced towards one side. And this is concerning because in a middle cerebral artery stroke, if there's a clot in the artery, generally the patient looks towards the site of the vessel occlusion. So if it's a right middle cerebral artery stroke, for example, and it's a clot dislodged within the large caliber vessel like that, the eyes will be deviated to the right side towards the stroke as well as the head. So presence of any head or gaze deviation towards one side, uh, the patient would score one point. Absence of head or gaze deviation would score zero points. If the patient is looking straight and when prompting, they're able to look towards the examiner, towards me, and then they're able to look in the other direction and back and forth without any issues, then that would be zero points as a normal assessment. If the gaze or head are deviated to one side and they're not able to cross midline on prompting to the other side, then you would score that as one point for presence of head or gaze deviation. So in this situation, when I look at the patient, I observe that the head is deviated and it looks like it's forced deviated to the right. The eyes are also deviated to the right. So my first question after the observation is can you look to 
your left and you look at me and they're unable to do that, then you score that as one point. So, sir, can you look to me? Look towards me. Can you bring your eyes over here? Can you follow my finger with your eyes? Can you look this way? And when I turn the head, it's essentially flexed towards the right side. And I would generally not recommend if the patient's found down on the floor and they have concern for cervical spine injury to do any neck manipulation. In that situation, just make an observation of the gaze and the head deviation. And therefore, the patient would get one for presence of the head and gaze deviation to the right. So the next component of the Ray scale is to assess for aphasia, which means ability to follow commands. Uh, the language function in most patients is uh, on the left side of the brain. And therefore, if the patient has right-sided weakness, those are the situations when we want to assess for aphasia. The two simple commands in the Ray scale that we ask the patient to perform on the good side, which is the left side of the body, is make a fist and close eyes. So here in this situation, we have a patient and we want to assess for aphasia. I will ask the patient to uh, perform these tasks on the left side. So make a fist and now close eyes. Great. So in this situation, uh, we would score this a zero for aphasia because the patient got both the first command, making a fist, as well as the second command, uh, closing eyes, uh, correctly, and therefore no deficit on the aphasia component. So to demonstrate uh, an abnormal component for aphasia, so I will ask the patient to go ahead and make a fist, and he's able to do that correctly, and now close eyes. And to command, he's not able to close his eyes, and therefore he got one task correct. However, one task he's not able to execute properly, and therefore we score this as one point on the race scale for moderate aphasia. Now to assess for severe aphasia, we again ask the patient to follow the two simple commands uh, as demonstrated earlier. And so here again, I ask the patient, can you go ahead and make a fist for me, sir? Go ahead and make a fist. And can you close your eyes? Close your eyes. Keep them closed. And you can see here that he's not able to follow either of those commands, and therefore will score two points on the race scale for inability to follow two simple commands, and therefore severe aphasia. The final component of the race scale is to assess for ability to recognize one's arm as well as recognize any impairment, weakness, disability in one's arm. And therefore you want to focus on the side that they have the weakness. And in this demonstration, the patient is noted to be weak on the left side. And therefore the first question would be, do you feel any uh, weakness on this side and whose arm is this? And if they get both of those questions correct, then you score that as zero. That means they do not have any agnosia, meaning no asomatoagnosia, no anosagnosia. Uh, asomatoagnosia, meaning they are unable to recognize this as their arm, and anosagnosia, meaning they're unable to recognize anything wrong with the arm, such as no weakness or disability. And one point for moderate agnosia means that either of those prompts with the questions is incorrect. So they either cannot uh, tell that this is their arm or they're uh, denying unaware of any weakness on that arm. And severe agnosia means they are unable to recognize this as their arm as well as they deny that anything's wrong with it. They feel like they have full strength. And so that's two points. 
So we've noted that the patient is weak on the left side, and therefore I hold up this arm and ask, do you know whose arm this is? Yes, it's my arm. Do you feel any weakness in this arm? Yes, I do. Okay. And then when I let go, note that the arm just drops. And so he got both of those questions correct, and therefore he has no agnosia and a score of zero. After noting that patient's weak on the left side, I lift up the arm and say, Sir, whose arm is this? I don't know. So he does not recognize that this is his arm, so he has asomatoagnosia. Then I ask, Do you feel weak in this arm? I don't know. Do you feel weak at all? Yes. Okay. So therefore, he gets one point because of asomatoagnosia, he does not recognize his arm. However, he does recognize that there is some weakness, and so he does not have anosagnosia. And we would term this as moderate agnosia. And we've again noted that the left side is weak, so I'm going to hold the arm up for the patient and ask, Sir, whose arm is this? I don't know. Okay. Is this your arm? No. Okay. Do you feel any weakness in this arm? No. Does it feel normal? Yes. Okay. And when I let go again, it falls down. So this patient has severe agnosia, meaning he's unable to recognize his own limb, as well as he denies that he has anything uh, wrong on that side. And therefore, he has asomatoagnosia, as well as anosagnosia and we score at two points for severe agnosia. So, we want to make a note that as part of the race scale assessment, if you add up all the points for the individual components that are tested, then you will get 11 points. However, uh, note that the race scale is only zero to nine points, and that is because in patients when you're they're noted to have weakness on the right side, you're only testing for the aphasia component. And when you have weakness on the left side, you're only testing for the agnosia component. And therefore, the two points from one of these components will not be included based on which side that they have weakness on and will result in a total of nine points uh, for the overall scoring.